Hello, my name is Typhoon, and in this lecture, we will use buttons and text view widgets from our layout with a little help from interfaces. So, we're gonna create an actual new project, and as we always do, we're gonna create empty project and build on it. Here, my application instead of uh, like basic UI, UI, and finish. Here, our Gradle is building, as you can see here. Mm, yeah, this is the tips from Android Studio. So these tips might be useful sometimes. So I, I recommend you to check these tips on every uh, like startup. And if you don't want to uh, show these tips in every day, you can just click on the don't show tips and close it. So in case I'm not going to close it, because they, it might be helpful sometimes for you. So uh, let's actually create a predictivity we created. And now in the editor window of Android Studios, let's switch to activity main that XML to make sure that you are you make sure on the design tab. From here, we as uh, I said earlier, we have three uh, these modes. First is code, split, and design. You can also use a split here. Uh, it might be useful sometimes, but if you have just an coding exercises, you can use code tab here. So let's switch to design tab. And uh, now we're going to add, uh, actually, as you can see, I, uh, I deleted uh, the auto-generated text to your item here. So actually, let's give the constraint layout uh, an ID, my constraint. And you will see more examples about constraint layout in next lecture. This is just on a basic application development. So it might help you to understand the next lectures here. So now we're going to add one text view at here at middle. Actually, let's make the constraints to the top and edges. Make it a little down here and make it actually increase the text size a little bit. And if you couldn't find it, let's uh, press font size or font size. Yeah, as you can see here, there's a text size uh, attribute and increase it, for example, to 38. Yeah, the 38 is OK. And we can also change the default text. As you can see, we, we give it a text view ID property. And uh, let's actually change this proper uh, text on it here to uh, here like this so this means we don't have any outputs on it and as you can see the android studio give us some warning here uh, hard coded text so we can also, also use hard coded text uh, this hard uh, like hard coded text um, might be useful when you want to create a multi-language application. So in case we don't, uh, in this lecture, we will not create multi-language application. We're going to create just English uh, application. And we will add six buttons on the interface. Actually, let's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So here, let's actually make this button. Uh, our sixth button is going to be here, here. We, we will make the constraints for it no, here. And oops, this was the third button. So it's going to be left corner. And this is our second and our first button. And here, let's make the constraints with these buttons here. So it might not be useful constraints, but I want to just show an example of how to create constraints. So uh, it's not the best practice to create constraints like that for compatible application for every device. So, but here just, I'm going to show you how to make this here. As you can see here, we created this. Yes, yes, here. Actually, yeah. Here, we're going to choose that. Make it a little higher to, and also make this little higher to that down, and make the constraints to it here. Actually, also make this constraint. You can also use blueprint, by the way, for making constraints. Actually, we don't want to see the blueprint for yet. 
So I'm gonna close the blueprint here actually. Yeah, as you can see the show margins, we have several showing options here. You can also show click on show all constraints like that. Uh, horizontally make the good lines infer constraints here and as you can see here uh, this is just quick uh, making the constraints for your application and make it like that and here i think it's okay actually let's run our application and see how our constraints wo looks like in a real world application here so as you can see we didn't constrain the right side of device so we will make it happen now okay this is our old application and here it comes as you can see we can click on those buttons and so on so now uh, we're gonna uh, when your layout is how you want uh, you can also click the infer constraints and this is what we do here so we will double click on each button and we will give the ids to it as you can see here they have ids by default but uh these ideas doesn't explain what we want to do with them and we will also create the uh, texts on it so now i'm gonna create some diagram for you actually it's okay so now we're gonna create the list uh from the diagram application this is by the way not uh, not an android studio based application i create i downloaded it from another website uh, for just to show you so you don't need this diagram i want to create some example of how to uh, what our button ids will be and what uh, our text is, is going to be on buttons here actually yes here let's find the list we need here here and increase the font size a little bit so you can see more here here so here we will have uh lists and here we're gonna uh, we're gonna make our text property text and uh a button button id and button button text in button text firstly we're gonna uh, we will have actually yeah so make it range and we will create range style property and here So let's delete it and create a new list so we can add add to this list here yeah 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 we can add to this list so firstly we will have two lists in one list we will store our uh, id button id button button id id actually let me see what you can see here so yeah it's okay and button id and button text text here so first button we need is add uh, text on the button here add and button id is going to be button add so it will explain to us that our button has add our actually our button id can be whatever we like but the button id is appropriate and we're going to make button uh, button add and we will also have take uh, and button take here actually yeah button take uh, no instead we will write button shrink and we will make the third op operator button take here the shrink and button shrink also we will have oops okay also we will have the third item which is going to be height height hide and button hide btn hide 
and let's add more lists here button hide button reset and button reset button uh, no uh, but we have reset we have hide shrink add and also take button take and re uh, lastly we just have grow grow and button grow here so we will name these buttons text properties and id properties like that so actually let's close this now and make uh and rename and re-id our buttons uh the button one is gonna be add here but a button id is button add and button text is gonna be add we will have grow button grow and yeah refactor and grow we will have button height and button height we will have button take yes uh, refactor and also change the text to take oops yeah uh, android studio just right here and reset actually we got some error here we can right here so under the crashed i think i will stop the lecture and restart the android studio and we'll come back here right now so here our flag pro uh, problem is fixed after i just uh, closed our recording and so here at the right we're gonna have button take and change the text property of it to yeah text uh, we will change it to take also at this button we're gonna change it to shrink and also we're gonna change the ip <laughs> id address to button shrink and lastly we just got the reset button reset uh, button reset and uh, reset so we have the text view as you can see actually instead of uh, my my text view and here we have i did and we give text on it as you can see here and we also have one text view and one constraint layout so uh, the pre the precise position and the text on the buttons are not very important so but the values and the id properties must be the same so the reason for this is that we will be using these id values to get reference to button instances and the text to instance in this layout from our kotlin code so we're going to switch to main activity.kt kotlin file and uh, we will uh, amend the, this here we will add after go the comma here at uh, after the app compete activity and view dot on uh, let's import the view firstly and view dot on click listener here we got the import implement some methods from it as you can see here this uh, view on click listener is abstract method implement members or uh, click on on click here so notice that the main activity declaration is underlined in the red uh, showing an error here so because now because we have made main activity into on click listener by adding it as an interface so we must implement the abstract functions on click listener the, the function is called 
on Clink as you've seen it and click on implement members. You can also do it by keyboard, just uh, alt and enter. And here you can choose two options. Make, I mean, <laughs> you can make a, a main activity abstract, but obviously we don't want to make a main activity abstract because this is our main uh, main class and under studio when under studio uh, when our application starts our uh, system calls these activities and searches for it and click on implement members and implement on click here so um now here we created our and we have no errors on it actually do we yeah we have we already started our pixel 5 api 33 this is the last version and uh, we will set the on click listeners on it so inside on create functions we will add button add actually uh, we need to firstly create a private val var value val value and to assign it to zero as you can see we got an error remove private yeah as you can see here we got not applicable in local variable um, now we're gonna of course we, we can we have to create in outside of on create function and now we're gonna add some codes in it so this code might be uh, like redlined as uh, in android studio but we will add our actually let me uh let me decrease the brightness a little bit so here button add dot set on set on click listener and we're gonna pass this here so we will do at all of our seven items including the text my text view so uh button take oops button take oops no button take copy bu uh, button grow button shrink button reset reset and button height and lastly we will add the text value uh yes let me remember yeah my text view my text view view and set on click listener so uh, this code set up uh, our application to listen for clicks on the buttons in the layout so each line of code does the same thing but in the on the different button for example button add refers to button in our layout by id property button take refers to the button uh, with the button take to the id property and so on so each button instance then calls the set on click listener function on itself so the argument passed in this here so um, as we said earlier in the object oriented part of our section uh, lecture ob object oriented section of our lecture uh, this keyword refers to the current class where the code is written so therefore in this code this refers to main activity the, and also the set on click listener function sets up our application to call the on click listener uh, interface now uh, whenever uh, one of our buttons get clicked by the user the on click functions will be called all uh, this works because the main activity implements the on click listener method so if you want to verify this uh, we will uh, let's actually temporarily delete this and as you can see we cannot override the on click here so uh, now we're gonna scroll uh, scroll the scroll it down to the um, here so actually we will create this on the here as you can see set on click listener is not works because we have to here and in on click and let's fix this also here in on click here we, we have p0 view and we will create val size is going to be float and when our v.id yeah p0 dot 
ID here. So we will code it later. And as you can see, Android Studio is added summit. So we need to add if our only save, as you can see here, only save or non null asserted calls are allowed on nullable receiver of type view. So actually, we can delete this and the error will gone here. But actually, you can do this, it will more error save uh, like this. So actually, we don't need it here. So uh, I want to. Be, I want to make this as uh, basic as I can but because in next lectures we're going to go deeper about this Kotlin here. So now we're going to add uh, in, in our win, we're going to add r.id the button uh, add and this button add will go to here and with button add of course we will add the value of it value plus plus and takes the value or um, our my text view value my text view value text here equals to value here we will fix this error so don't uh, don't give attention to this here are that id that button take here it goes to value and text, uh, my text view that way and we will also add the r.id dot button reset reset and here it goes to value uh, so button reset will uh, equal value to zero and use will assign it to it and after that we have r that id that button shrink here button shrink will make the size of it to text size my text view my text view to text scale x and uh, lastly we will read the text my text value dot text scale x equals to size minus one and we will also have the button height function uh, button height code and here button 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 height goes to uh, with button height we're gonna change the visibility to invisible so if our my text value my text value visibility uh, is equal to view dot visible then uh, this means we have is currently visible currently visible so hide it and here we will make the my text my text value dot visibility to equals to view dot invisible and after that we will also have um, actually we don't need an else here and if uh, if this is not true then make this uh, text my text value dot visibility or instead we will actually make it button i dot text here show and here as you can see we have when and else and we will also add add else here and instead of this we have to write an in uh, if here and we will also uh, have else which is if our else uh, condition triggers then this means our my text value is uh, already invisible so we will make it visible here my text value visibility 
and view that visible visible and uh, button hide that text height here so uh, this is our first line of code and this is our the on click function that we implemented from on click listener here here and we are we actually we did the button take button uh, reset shrink one two three four five uh, we have the button yeah one two three four five we are missing something on the buttons here shrink height grow ah uh, yeah we also uh, we also need the grow here now for now we will not use the grow uh, button here so this code is uh, the first three bn branches so they handle it on the button add uh, button take and button reset here like this so the code in the button add branch simply increments the value uh, va value variable and then it does something new here as you can see here it sets the text property of the text txt value object so this has the effect uh this causing text view to display whatever value is stored in uh value here as you can see here and uh, we also have the take button button uh, take button uh, and this does the exactly the same the only it subtracts one from value instead of adding one and here uh, we also have we, here we this button take decreases our here the third branch here as you can see this button reset this button reset sets to sets our value to zero here and uh, again updates the text property of the text value at the end of whichever when uh, branch is executed the entire vm block is uh, exited here so the on click function returns and lives goes back to normal until the users uh, ne clicks next so we will let's actually move the examine our button shrink and uh, but actually we will also we also gonna create the button grow here so r that id that button grow here size is text the value dot text scale x and here the text value or instead of the text value we will make this my text view here my text view dot my text view dot text scale scale x equals the size plus one here is uh, this next two branches handle the shrink and grow buttons from our user interface so we can confirm that this from the id button grow value and id button shrink value so what's what is new here and more interesting are getter and setter of the uh, my text view class uh, that are used on the buttons so the getter of the my scale x property returns the horizontal scale of the text within the object is, is used on so we can see that the object it is used on our text we have text value instance the size and after that the size equals code at the uh, start of the line here uh, a size that returned val returned value to our float variable size so the next line of code in each when branches changed uh, the horizontal scale of the text used uh, using the setter of text scale x property uh, so actually let's uh, look at the button hide and button ring uh, branches here so here again it's uh, for convenience the button height button height button height we have if and else commands in it so this code takes a little bit of explaining here so let's take it a step at a time 
the first there is an if and as expression nested inside when branch so he is uh, this is the if part and the condition to be evaluated is my text value visibility equals view uh, we invisible so when our my text view visibility is visible the first part of that the this before uh, this equality operator this uses the visibility properties getter to return the value describing whether or not text view uh, my text view is currently visible or not so the return value will be one of the three possible constant values as defined in weave uh, class say so they are visible invisible and we also have uh, gone here go on so we will not use that here so if our my text view is visible to the user interface on the ui uh, the getter returns the view dot visible the condition is and then condition is evaluated true and if block is executed here and inside the if if block we use the visibility properties setter and make it visible to the user within the invisible uh when the invisible is true here in addition to this we can exchange the text on the button height show uh, button height object to show using the text properties setter as you seen here we have uh, lots of errors in this code because of that we have to implement our view binding uh, in kotlin so here uh, outside the on create function we're gonna create uh, the private uh, private value private value private here late in it variable and this is gonna we, we will name it the binding and binding here this binding will result result profile binding here actually we, we got an error here and and that's because uh, we will have to edit the gradle file and enable the view binding from the build features so as you can see we have not seen any build features in it it's a, just a quick setting build features here features here and view binding view binding to true here and after that we have to click on the sync as we did in previous lectures and here now we need to use the result result profile binding actually we can also use the activity main binding here activity main binding here we created it and after that we're gonna inflate from our layout so actually we don't need this anymore uh, instead we will binding activity activity uh, activity main binding oops activity here activity main binding and we will inflate we will use the inflate uh, function and layout inflator layout inflator as you can see here after that we're gonna set content view uh, binding dot root here and this that, that's the good part about kotlin here we have view binding here we can also use the binding button and as you can see here and all of our errors is gone so another reason that i just uh, wanted to see uh, so like show you later that we can add uh, edit the view here actually code um now we're gonna refactor rename now instead we can just uh, write it like that binding and we will copy this binding at all of the our buttons here also my text view we can also use this when, whenever the items we have on ui that has an id we can use the bindings to edit and manipulate it, them here 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 and here to 
my text yeah you know we need to my instead of my text value we will change it to my text view so by uh, pressing ctrl and r you can change these values massively like uh, for example i want to change the my text value to my text view my text view and replace that and as you can see all our problems is gone here so now as you can see here we got no errors so that's it and i yeah i know this lecture is uh, gone far away and now uh, we're gonna run our application and that's it this is our application here as you can see when we click on the add uh, the number is adding take number is decreasing grow we can this, this, this is the fun way to grow something but here as you can see we also sh can shrink the number here and we also can hide and show as you can see when we click on the hide uh, when our number is already hidden uh, our text button text changes to show and when we click on show our button text changes to hot here we can also reset and uh, when we click on reset our button value uh, our text view value uh, again equals to zero here so that's it uh, and in next lecture uh, see you here so thank you for watching with this long i know this is almost 40 minute lectures but i know uh, like uh, you learned lots of from it and in next lectures we will do more ui examples uh, in kotlin here so i'm waiting you in next lecture